Hey, uh, I'm back with a, a longer time limit video. Um, the last one seemed to be incredibly popular. So uh, thank you for all the kind comments. Um, and yeah, I mean, as you guys seem to really enjoy it, I'm going to continue to to try and um, get to 2500 through explaining my ideas in, in a series of these longer time limit games. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick to my openings and the openings that I play, I've also made DVDs from. So what I'm going to play here, I'm going to stick, rather than a London system, which I've also done a DVD on, I'm going to stick to my killer D4 range. So this is obviously the video killer D4 that you can buy from our shop. And I'm going to stick to what I recommend, the opening I recommend in that DVD. So my opponent has played the Queen's Indian. And I know I spent quite a lot of time at the start of the game. Maybe I wabbled on last time. But I think it's also important to tell you the ideas I'm thinking right from the start. This is, I, I think, key. So this is one of the most typical Queen's Indian positions. Now, Knight C3 or Knight to F3 on move 3 can be pretty much interchangeable. Um, I prefer knight c3 because it, it seems to give me more options. Occasionally, my knight on g1 might want to come to e2. Okay, so now my opponent has played the Tarash opening. And this is quite a rare opening. Now, I'm going to play an old romantic gambit because it's what I recommend, I, I believe. And it's a hell of a lot of fun. Um and someone did ask me to play more aggressive openings. Now, the Tarash, this move C5, has been made popular by a number of players. Spassky used it uh, quite regularly in some world championship matches. So did even Gary Kasparov. And the main line is to take on D5, when my opponent has two choices. If he takes with the E pawn, it's the Tarash variation. He can also do a gambit line here by taking on D4, which is... I can't remember the von whatever gambit. Uh, it's something I've actually looked at a bit myself. So this is the Tarash variation when he takes on d5. And here, uh, well, you often get what we call an isolated pawn position. So at some point, the d pawn will be exchanged for the c pawn. So if you can just imagine remo removing both of those pawns from the board, you get what's called a typical isolated pawn position meaning that the pawn on d5 is isolated because it can't be defended by one of its brotherly pawns. Now, uh, the minus side for black having an isolated pawn is that it can be weak, especially in the ending. The plus side is it often gives him a space advantage to attack on. So when you have an isolated pawn, you want to keep pieces on the board. When you are playing against an isolated pawn, you want to swap pieces off. But I'm going to play an old gambit, which I'm very, very fond of. And this is the Gambit move, which I'm very fond of. And it's a very old Gambit, only been played a couple of times. And when I was young and looking at chess and I, I wanted to learn D4, this idea as an opening idea, I came across this E4 idea as an attempt to blast open the center. And it's a really interesting way to play against the, this, this, uh, this opening here. Um, and... God, can you see this? Look at this. What a cheeky opponent. Unbelievable. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to have to show you the, the chat here. Um, because this is, this is unbelievable. He's got the cheek. He's got the cheek to say this. GM fast move, please. You're playing the wrong bloody time limit, sir. I'm very tempted now to go and make myself a cup of coffee after, after being shall we say, rather trolled like that. But anyway, um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to ignore his, his chat for now. God, what a cheek. What a blooming cheek. He should be, you know, a bit more respectful for that. And it's a long time. It Play Blitz if you want this. Okay, so anyway, on with the idea of this gambit. He, he's played the best move, taking on e4. Now, I think I was one of the first players in the history of chess. You play like computer. What the hell's wrong with this guy? What the hell is wrong with this guy? <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to smash this guy up. Okay, and the idea now, he's put me off my stride now. The, the root, I mean, one of the things that amazes me, actually, in chess, it's often uh, lower-rated players who are much ruder 
than uh, higher rated players. This is something I, I've noticed, and this guy should have some blooming respect, and he should be, if anything, honoured that he's playing playing against a grandmaster, considering he's a bit of a low rated patser. I've got to avoid getting into it. But let me go back to the chest now. I'm going to try to avoid him. I'm going to take my time, so I'll wind him up. And I've now sacrificed two pawns. And a computer would not play like this. Computers don't sacrifice two pawns. Um, and the whole point of this is to go queen b3 and to try and start an attack against f7. And it's a very sharp, gambity line. And it has a lot of tricks involved. And it's a very dangerous line for, for black. Yes, he has got two central pawns, but I've got three pieces developed. And now I've had this before. This is one of the only ways to defend f7. He can't go knight h6 in that line because I'd have whipped off the defender there. Queen here is a mistake because now my knight comes into d5 with tempo. And of course, his queen is now being asked the option, where, where does it move to? And also, I'm going to try to get some ideas of knight c7 in. So it's a very dangerous gambity line. Okay, so he's gone back. And now, well, bishop f4 looks uh, very possible. But I also have some very intriguing other options here. Because imagine if my knight wasn't here, I'd be able to play bishop takes uh, f7 here. So I'm just thinking, as well as playing a normal developing move like bishop to this square, bishop to f4, I can um, also consider maybe some crazy move like like knight to, to this square, like to b6. Um, because if he takes with a pawn, I got bishop takes f7, bishop takes g8. But if I go knight b6, he'll go queen takes. So I'm just, again, trying to emphasize everything I'm thinking here. And then I can take with check on this square. I can take the knight, but he's able to swap queens off. And I don't really want to swap queens off in this position, I feel. Um... So bishop f4 looks very normal. Um, let's just have a, a consideration about other things here. Anywhere else I can move my knight to. Uh, I mean, I could go knight c7. Nope, that loses because he goes queen takes. Knight here is still very tempting for some reason. I check, he goes king e7. I think bishop f4 is looking natural. Let, let's play bishop f4 because it, it's a simple developing move. It brings another piece into the game. And it threatens knight c7. I think he has to go bishop to this square, bishop d6. So then after bishop d6, this is only made to stop my knight coming in. I've got four, oh, one, two, four pieces developed. He has zero. So this is the, the idea of this gambit. Now, I'm thinking here a couple of ideas. Now, I, I could go queen to g3 here. That, that's quite an intriguing little move. What other ideas do I have? Do I even have knight to c7 check now? So again, let me just do a bit of calculation uh, and I'll tell you. So knight c7 check, bishop takes, takes here check, bishop, king f8. Doesn't look quite as good, does it? Um, bishop b5 check, knight c6. Um, I could even just go knight e2 and develop very quickly. I kind of like queen g3. If he checks over here, I just go king f1. Let's go queen g3 because this this has dual threats. And I'm just again calculating if he takes here, can I even take on a g7 here? So this is a very tactical game, unlike the last game uh, that, that, that we had uh, in this series. This is much more tactical. Um, now, if he takes here, I could also just go queen takes because it seems very hard for him to stop me checking on c7 there. But I do, I do want to play the most testing for his position if I can, which is queen takes g7. Now check here, I've always got b4. Queen takes g7 looks looks to me very good because I'm threatening just to take the rook. And I, I want to double check this because I don't want to fall for any tactics. Uh, I take here, he can't go queen f6. It looks incredibly strong to me, queen takes g7. Because I'm going to take his rook, aren't I? And also, I might be threatening some knight jump there with queen takes f7, mate. So queen takes here. Oh, he has bishop e6. Queen takes here, and then I take on g8. This must be strong. This must be strong. There's no way he can defend his rook. 
My king always has f1 if he tries to start on a counter-attack. I still have more pieces developed in him, and he, he, he looks to be forced back here. I can't wait to see another comment from him, though. Come on. If he loses this, he'd be like, you are computer, even though I am 1976 and you have GM next to your name. You know, I mean, come on. If you're going to play a longer time limit, then you can't insult people for taking time. He's got me so angry, this guy. Um, but anyway, uh, this is one of those. OK, so he moved his bishop back. So now I would love it if my knight wasn't here because I, I would have queen takes here. Checkmate. But wherever I move my knight, it seems like it will help him. Knight f6, queen takes f6. Now, if I go knight here, he can still go queen takes because I take on f7. He has king d8. So, I mean, let's win some material and create a threat of going queen takes g8. I mean, this has got to be this has got to be correct way to play. Now I'm material up, so uh, it's obviously been a success. This now, how do I continue? Well, you still need to be careful, of course, in these positions. And I mean, I could take here, or I could take on d4. Now I'd rather take on d4 because that pawn's a bit annoying. It's a more central pawn. It's going to give him a little bit of initiative because he's going to go knight here. Uh, I take here. I don't think he's going to get enough initiative. Okay, so I'm just going to grab this pawn. And the, I'm the exchange up. Um, and I'm quite happy, if I can, to grab the other pawn. My knight does a fantastic job of controlling a lot of squares. So he's defended that one. He wants to go knight here next move when he's going to have a little bit of a development advantage. So we want to look out for that one. Now, something like knight to e3 strikes me as a pretty decent move. But then... Oh, let's watch out for that check. Oh, not a decent move, losing my queen. Um, so, again, double check these things. Knight e3 seemed okay, but no, we don't want to lose a queen. Now, castling queen side, I don't really like because I'm material up. There's no point when you're material up taking risks. You want to consolidate your position. And I think a move I like here is knight e2. I'm just wondering where I'm going to put my queen after knight here. Well, maybe there's a number of okay squares. I mean, even queen to d2 looks all right because my knight defends b. Let, let's develop a piece. Come on, let's just develop sensibly. And I want to get my king castle, put a rook on d1, a rook on c1. And as long as I don't fall for any tricks here, this, this, must, be, this must be good. But, of course, when you do go material up like i say generally the rule of chess is you go material up you're going to have to defend for a little bit because your opponent will gain some initiative in response to that material so that could be uh, the case here i'm hoping well okay i've just seen that his knight is coming to e5 that's that's slightly annoying his knight coming to this square um because if i go queen d2 knight e5 well that's a little bit annoying that is I got rook c1. Um, how, how annoying is that? He's got rook c8. So again, calculation in this type of position is so much more important than the last game I had at this time limit. Much more tactical. So we just got to make sure we do calculate um, safely here. So, um, you know, he's got some... Okay, queen here, knight here, attacking my bishop. Maybe I should just go b3 there. And I've got to watch out for some b5 ideas. I think my queen's better on d2 because I don't want to get hit by a rook c8. So generally, I think this is the correct square to go to. So let's do this. Now, after knight here, I can also go knight e3 then. I kind of like move my knight to e3. It seems like a multi-purpose move. Number one, it, defend, it, it, it defends my bishop. Number two, it's just a nice solid square. It attacks his bishop. It consolidates my pieces um, also opens up the D file. So I think actually that might be the most solid way to play. If knight here, I'm going to, I think, potentially go knight to E3. Now, if he takes on C4, knight takes C4. Looks okay to me. Now, let's do this one. Let's put the knight here. Let's, let's, let's try to consolidate as much as we can. Keep my pieces nice and compact. I am material up, so... I obviously can keep my, my pieces nice and compact here. Again, I'm just double checking each move I'm playing because it's much more tactical. Now, he's played it. That move cannot be good. He hasn't got time to play slow moves. Castling, 
very natural but also can i can i try to be a bit more to the point here and play rook d1 well then he's got knight d3 check castling will he put his queen over here does he have any threats well, he has a little bit of initiative i could also castle queenside now he's always going to go knight d3 and i'll probably take and put a knight on g3 i'm just going to castle i think i'm going to castle this side okay other moves i just saw i got knight f4 here trying to make some more exchanges you know i'm a bit worried about casting because he's got a little bit of initiative so i'm just making sure i've always got knight g g3 defending so i think this should be safe i'm a bit worried because you know i, I wanted to oh he's got knight shit knight check and bishop takes h2 that was a complete blunder there i saw i saw the danger and i just missed it so he, he is going to pick up my queen now so uh that was massive i saw the danger i should have played rook d1 that was a major blunder there okay but let, let's let's not worry because we've still got a lot of material here um uh for for uh for the piece so i'm just going to play a bit quicker i don't want to lose this game and okay we, we, it's not the end of the world it's still about equal material i've just let him back in the game when i, I clearly shouldn't have blundered like that that was a very very beginnerish blunder um Okay, so I'm going to bring some pieces over just to try to defend my king side a little bit better. Prepare f5 in this position. And, you know, I, I, I've certainly let this position slip somewhat here, haven't I? That was very silly because as soon as I played it, I saw that little trick. I, I was always very beginnerish, very beginnerish thing I fell into there. I mean, uh, shouldn't be falling things for things like that, clearly. Okay. Now, um, I have to be very careful here because he wants to get his queen into my position and, and, and attack me. Um, and my king is not entirely safe here. Now, I don't want to defend with this. His queen's coming in. It's coming here. Yeah, I don't like the way I played this. He's really pissed me off, this guy, as well. Um, hence why maybe a little psychological thing is not... I don't like this anymore at all. He's got a simple plan, getting the queen in. He's got bishop here coming. Ah, my piece is not coordinating either. Uh, I need to create some play here. So let's see how we can fight back. Now I could, well, I don't like his bishop coming to the square. I could go, no, I can't go there, can I? Cool, I'm losing, losing everything at the moment. Right, so another thing we got to do when we get bad positions is fight as hard as we can and I, I just don't like his plan of moving his queen into f4. This is uh, this is indeed uh, put me on the back foot. I need to create some counterplay here. Okay, so how am I going to do this? Well, okay, I'm going to have to try to defend a bit of an onslaught here, at least get my rooks to active active places. So I'm going to get my rook on the c file, try to get this rook potential to come into the game later on. Very beginnerish blunder there, I have to admit. I mean, I shouldn't have done that one. And he did have a little bit of initiative, but I should have just... This is the thing. When you win material in complicated games, you've got to be able to calculate pro properly. You've got to avoid a lot more billets than you would do if you're a tactical player. And sometimes you might fall for this. In this case, I fell for that cheap trick. So what's the best strategy when you've got a bad position? Well, the best strategy is to keep things as complex as you can um obviously don't give up <laughs> that's not going to help you is it and, and keep uh keep as m many active things going as you can don't defend passively try to defend actively so that's what i'm desperately trying to do here but i'm really scared about him putting his bishop here when I i'm not sure how i'm gonna cope with that so i'm you know his bishop comes in here then his queen comes around how am i actually dealing with this well I think I'm going to have to try, first of all, step out of this one. Very scared about this. And somehow I need to try and win this pawn. I mean, I can't get a rook to the d1. So actually I'm fi trying to desperately find active ways to defend this, but I'm not, not finding a good way. Now he's played e3. That's a tempting move, but that pawn was very nice supporting his bishop. So... Even though that looks very scary, I'm not as scared now because I want to try to take control of this important f3 square because that was a key square where his bishop was going to go. I think he should have kept his pawn on e4. He had a very simple idea, putting his bishop on f3 check 
and then either pushing his H pawn or just trying to bring his queen around to this square and delivering checkmate. He, he didn't need to play this move. But a real big skill is, of course, when you're playing chess, is you know you, you can get bad positions sometimes, but not giving up and trying to make it as hard for your opponent as possible. They do say when you're playing grandmasters, you need to beat them a couple of times. So that's what I'm going to try try and do here. So, okay, so he wants this square. Still a difficult position for me. Don't get me wrong. That is a good move he's found. And he also wants to come in here. So if I go rook here, his queen's coming in here and he's threatening this one now. But I, I can start a counterattack there. But can I? No, he takes here. That's going to be checkmate. So he's threatening to come in here. This is a good move that he's found again. Uh, very annoying he's found this move. So, uh, okay. Well, I can go rook here. I'm trying to find the only ways to defend. But then queen check. He takes here. Queen here check. This is very uncomfortable now. Rook here. Queen here. Ah, dear. This is not pleasant for me at all. Um, right, how are we going to play this? Do I need to sacrifice more material to make this? I don't believe I can sacrifice more. Rook here, queen here, takes, wish that worked. It can't, doesn't work though. Uh, so to avoid this check, I even need to move my king or move my rook. If I move my rook, he takes here. This is the real problem. And then what do I do there? I can't see a good move. Rook takes, he takes here. My position falls apart. Now I could go here, but I feel that that is just really asking for it. Takes here, takes, he has a check. Ugh. He has a check here. I'm really struggling in that position. So this check is annoying. Do I have to move my king? Maybe I have to move my king, but then, then he's sneaking his way in, isn't he? Bishop here takes... I might have to do this move. I mean, I'm using a process of elimination, trying to trying to rule out uh, everything. But this is a move. I've just played my king backwards and forwards. I, I'm clearly not playing the right moves here. I'd love to now get my bishop around to defend, but it's not easy. And, okay, well, it doesn't help my situation because my rook's dropping... If king here, he's going to check and he's going to win this one. So I might have lost. I might have lost this game. Very, very frustrating uh, to lose in such a bloody manner as this against someone so, excuse my French, annoying. Um, okay, but I'm going I'm to put all my games up here anyway. I mean, this is it, it does prove that even GMs can lose to much lower rated players in the most frustrating of ways. So um, let's see. Let's see how he's going to do this now. Okay, so King G2. And we'll wait for some smug comments at the end. I'll go over the game again. Obviously, it's quite annoying to lose my second game in this series. I'm going to I'm gonna have to move a little bit more uh, cautiously in future, aren't I? I'm not going to resign for a while. I'm going to play on because obviously he, he's, he's annoyed me a bit. Um, but yeah, that's that. That is uh, that's put me off. But okay, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to include all my games that I I play on this, whether I lose, whether I win. I'm sure it's just a minor, like you know, a minor sort of uh, glitch in the matrix. These things do do occasionally happen. But I just fell for this very stupid, stupid, stupid tactic there. You know, it's something that you, you know. I'm going to try to think why I fell for that tactic because I saw it before. I just totally. I, told, I think I rushed a bit too quickly in that moment. I should have taken a little bit more time just to, um, you know, just to ensure that I uh, don't fall into these that that, tri that trap. He seems to be playing extremely accurately as well, suspiciously accurately, but, you know, uh, especially as he mentions cheating and then he starts playing all these moves which seem to be, well, you know, very accurate but that's one of the problem with this time limit you do generally get more cheaters um playing as well so what do i do here well the problem is he's got a check and then he's got bishop takes here mate so don't think there's many ways out of this one um well can i if i go here he's going to check me he's going to take my rook i can't keep my rook on this pawn that's why his play looks you know very very accurate 
which is very annoying. I think I'm going to have to throw this one away. So there we go. GM thinking this one, uh, not up to the top level. So, okay, I think I'm going to have to resign here. There's nothing I can do in this position. My position is crumbling. So I'm going to have to resign to this bloody annoying player as well. Okay, well, let's have a look at the game. 31 move lost. Oh, dear, oh, dear. So let's have a look where, where things went wrong there. Well, okay, um, the opening was this very interesting gambit line where I get all my pieces out, and it seemed to work pretty well here with queen b3. Obviously, queen e7 is not a very good move, so I come in with tempo, and I think the way I played it with queen g3 just seems to be... Uh, it seems to work very well, so I'm not going to fault any of my moves here. But it is complicated, so I did need to basically raise my danger level somewhat. And now Charlie's going to come and uh, say, uh, help help me out after that loss. You're wet, Charlie. You're a wet cat. And taking this pawn, I still think is okay, because it's a nice central pawn that I've got rid of. And around here, well, maybe I started drifting here, because I didn't really want to allow his knight to come in. But there can't be anything wrong with a simple developing move. And even here, I saw that, you know, when my knight moves, there's some trick with his queen takes queen. But my biggest mistake, of course, is in this position, castling, which as soon as I played it, I realized it's a blunder. I mean, all I need to do here is play a couple of accurate moves. And it just shows you even... You know, even at my level, you can't you can't uh, drift for even a, a split second, and that's precisely precisely what I did here. I drifted for a split second, and another thing I hate is when you lose a game, you get lots of people laughing at you afterwards, which is uh, uh, typical. Um, so, uh, okay, anyway, I, I'm still going to put this video up, even though I don't want to. It's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to cry after such a good first video. It, it's only, it's like, you know, my life is, is, if you do a good first video, which everyone loves, you know, the next thing you've got to do in life has to be absolute crap. Because otherwise things will just be too, too, too damn good. So I think it's kind of a bit like me that, you know, the first video you guys seem to love, which thank you for. The second video I do absolute bloody disaster and i didn't enjoy it at all because the guy was bloody rude to me at the start as well <clears throat> but anyway hey ho I'll, I'll, I'll get up to 2500 just you've got to just bounce with the blows haven't you and the thing is i, I have to say you know after it was a bit suspicious the way he played because he mentioned the cheater thing why would he even mention that you play like computer when i've played three moves and i've gambited two pawns so mentioning computer kind of thinks to me, was he using a computer? Okay, maybe not for the first couple of moves, but around this stage here, you know, he seems to play very bloody accurately. Um, you know, that was the other thing. I mean, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think excuses. So I shouldn't do that. So what should I do here? Well, castling was just a horrible blunder. Absolute pats of move. I mean, I think I should just go rook d1, keep an eye on here. And then he probably has to go knight d3. And then I just get rid of this knight and I put my knight somewhere solid. Why didn't I do this? I put my knight probably somewhere like g3. I'm an exchange up and it's going to be, it should be a winning position with careful play. And it just shows you this one slip here, castles. I was looking at knight f3 when I played it, but I suddenly, as soon as I played it, I thought, oh God, I've dropped my queen. And after this, well, I have to say he did seem to play very accurately. You know, I can't fault his play here. Um, one thing again in hindsight probably should have done I should have probably I didn't fight as hard as I would normally here for whatever reason I should have taken on e4 now because that pawn proved to be such a big pain and then bishop takes knight g3 gaining some tempo and maybe I can still be uh, you know be in this uh, in this battle then okay but anyway there, there's some of my faults I think that was a bit you know as I say disappointing bit of a letdown there uh, the way I lost that one, blundering my queen, um, not paying enough attention, not being as cautiously I should in a position where I need to be in a winning position. And it just shows you the dangers of uh, in a tactical game. You have to be so much more alert than, than you would be normally in this Monday morning. Maybe I shouldn't have played tactically on a Monday morning. Maybe against lower rate players, playing this choice of opening is wrong. I should play something more positional and just wait for them to make a mistake unless they're a computer. And... Okay, anyway, um, still, there are my thoughts on this 
bloody awful game. I will try to do more, and I hope they're going to be a bit better in the future. Uh, thanks for watching that. Uh, I didn't enjoy it. Hopefully you enjoyed it more than me. <laughs> okay, bye for now.